as I've watched him at Wimbenyama, um, and, and Tim's one of my all time favorite players. And, and you, you've already touched on that. Like, I just never quite understood, like, why do you want to be a pain in the ass? Like, if you're the best player in the team, and granted, like, you can be mad at your coach, you can be mad at the roster, you can be mad at all these different things. But, you know, when I look at Steph or I look at a Duncan, you know, there's something there where there's a selflessness, despite the fact that they know they're the best player, because I think a lot of the drama just kind of, is an energy sucker for teams sometimes. Right. Not to say that there aren't some players that are totally justified for being upset about their situation, um, but it's becoming, it just feels more and more rare for the face of the franchise to be somebody that just understands the team part of it. Maybe I sound old with all of this, but I think you probably agree. Uh, by all accounts, man, it feels like every time, I, whether I watch Wembenyama respond to adversity in a game, which there's certainly been a lot of, when I see him in interviews, um, all the interactions, it feels very real that yeah. you know who knows what's going to happen and who knows how good the team's going to be in the next couple of years. But being tasked with this, it, it's just not for everybody. And it feels like at least early returns are, especially in some of the great moments this year where I'm like, I think this is the guy. Like, I think this is somebody that is is the perfect like personality to continue kind of the Spurs tradition, by the way. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. Uh, he he handles the pressure, uh, all the hype. Uh, he just takes it all in stride. He you know he just doesn't get caught up and consumed with all of it. And I, I think he's a, like I said earlier, he's just wise beyond his years. He's able to block out the noise, uh, block out the criticism. Uh, he's got the big picture in mind. I mean, he's got he's got big goals that he's going after uh, and that he's trying to accomplish. So uh, he doesn't he doesn't let really anything get to him. And, and he's, he's been that way, uh, according to, you know, everything that we've heard from his playing days in Europe, where, you know, teams would try to beat up on him, uh, you know, guy, grown men are going after him and he just handles it so well. I mean, he rarely, rarely, if ever, uh, you know, complains on the court about not getting fouled. Uh, you haven't seen him have these interactions with the refs where he's, you know, going at him. And he, we had, we had a game uh, last week or so where Indiana just, they, they pounded on him. I mean, they beat him up, and he still ends up with 31, 13, six blocks, six assists. Uh, you know, he just continues to play. He's just kind of above everything, uh, right? You know, he's, you know, you, you look at guys, you know, we go to all these arenas and we watch players warm up. Steph Curry's warm up is the craziest thing you're ever going to see. I mean, he has so many people there before the game just to watch him warm up on the road and at home. Victor's getting that same way. I mean, he comes out of the tunnel, wherever we are, he's got crowds waiting for him just to watch him uh, out there go through his warm-up routine. And he handles it just, you know, better than, you know, anybody his age could possibly do. I mean, I, I can't imagine if I was that age and I'm walking on the court and everybody's out there uh, watching me warm up at 20 years old and cheering me on. Uh, I think that'd be a little daunting and it'd be a little uh, distracting, but he just, I mean, he just navigates it so smoothly. This this probably isn't the fairest question because I think we already know the answer to it. It's like, okay, but what about the team and moving forward? Is the ceiling of the roster enough? And it's like, well, no. Like, you know, I like Devin. I think his shot creation is is really, really special. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've liked Keldon in the past. I, you know, this hasn't been a great year for him. I really like Sohan. Uh, I don't know that I – well, I'll just tell you. I didn't understand the Sohan point guard thing at the beginning of the year. Uh, I know the arguments for it. But I also think from a basketball standpoint, like you played, if the guy who has the ball the entire time is maybe not in tune to all of the <laughs> the sharing <laughs> part of it. Uh, uh -huh. But, you know, look, they're were, they were trying different things. I've heard all sorts of different theories and arguments on it, but they, look, they moved off on it. Um, so I don't want to sit here. This is your home broadcast and everything. Like, hey, is this team terrible around Victor? Because that's not, that's not what I'm going to ask. And that's not really even yeah. what I believe because I do think there's some talent. but what do you think is the best fit? Like the kinds of players, I know you can name specific players, but like, what does he need to unlock everything that he's capable of as a basketball player? Well, we, we, I'm, I'm sure we're going to continue to look at the young guys that we have right now, obviously. Uh, and you know, all the guys you're talking about, I mean, they're so young. Jeremy Sohan's 20, uh, Ben Vassell's 22. Uh, if I'm, if I've got my numbers right. Uh, obviously, Victor's 20. Uh, you know, all our guys, our, our oldest guy on the team, I believe, is Devontae Graham at 28 or 29 years old. So we're, 
you know, at that age, we have to always remember that these guys should be juniors or seniors in college at the most. Uh, so there's still a lot of potential. I used to grade guys on a curve of, hey, four years of college, and then that next year's your rookie year. So for me, like a guy who plays uh, one year in, in college and then comes out, hey, you got three years, and then your fourth year to me is like what, you, what a true rookie should be. And so our guys, I think, are ahead of the curve already. Uh, it's just that right now people are, are impatient. They want us to win right away instead of just going through the, the building process. So when I look at players going forward, you know, there are guys on our team that are going to be pieces and they're going to, they're going to be pieces that we're going to keep around Victor, obviously. And then I think, you know, you, you want to uh, try to go out and find um, some established vets that can continue to show him the ropes. You, you talked about it earlier where Timmy comes into a team that had essentially won 59 games the year before, and he had guys there that were established. He had guys that could show him the, ro- the ropes, teach him the nuances of the game, uh, how to prepare yourself, how to get rest, those kind of things. Uh, and so uh, Victor hasn't had that luxury. They're all young and they're all trying to learn together. And so you kind of would, you know, wouldn't mind having some old heads on the end of the bench there that could impart some wisdom. Same thing with David. I mean, we had Caldwell Jones and Mo Cheeks and Terry Cummings. All those guys could take David aside and say, hey, this is how this guy's going to play tonight. This is what he's going to try to do to you. And they could teach you the nuances of the league and, and the game. So uh, I think that's probably the biggest thing uh, and we're going to try to continue to uh, to develop guys. And I would say the last thing I would say, maybe, uh, you know, try to find a few more shooters because uh, he's obviously already facing double teams. Sometimes they're sending you know, two extra players at him. And so uh, he's a, an unselfish guy. He sees the floor better than anybody. He gets the ball out. And if you have guys that make the defense pay, I think it benefits everybody. Okay. Uh, this isn't meant to be critical. This is simply... You know, as, as you started this, and I would agree, like we're watching him and it feels like something we shouldn't do. We shouldn't be asking, like, could this guy be the greatest of all time? It feels right. disrespectful yeah, yeah. to the people that are on that list, right? This isn't right. normally how we... So right. knowing that that is part of the conversation of like how special could he end up being, I'll have nights where I watch him get into his offense and it can be a struggle. It can be a struggle basically just because of his physical. It's just hard to be that tall to then cross someone up and then get into your offense. And I think when you look at the the history of the players, granted there was a big man era there where everything was built around the center and had a resurgence later on. But you right. know, when I think of the great, I think of the guys at your position, the wings, it's like, I need a bucket tie game. Yeah. Elimination game in a playoff series. It's, it's game. Like, You've got to make that bucket. You've got to get that. Is he somebody that you think will be able to get into his own offense off the dribble and and be somebody that's making those kinds of shots? Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any question. I think he's done it already. He's done it already. And I, I think a lot of teams know that. I mean, his fourth quarters this year have been really good. He's been incredible in the clutch. Uh, not afraid to take the big shots. Not afraid to to try to take a game over. We've we've seen that, and and he's really he's done on both ends now, Ryan. And and what you're saying is exactly correct. I tell everybody the reason we were so dominant for so long is because at the end of the game we could throw it down to number 21 in the low block, and we were going to get something out of it. He he was going to score, and so that's and and he was going to defend as well. So that's why we were so good for a long time. It's going to take a while for. I think everybody on the court, especially a young team, to figure that out. Our guys have been kind of programmed. I think not our guys. But the entire league has been programmed to shoot three balls and just fire away instead of like we were. First thing I did when I caught the ball on the wing is I'm looking down the low block for David or Timmy. That's how we were programmed. And so it was always an inside-out game to us. And when we're more like that, which will happen over the years, where we're throwing it down him in the – guts of the game in the last three, four, five minutes when it's uh, crunch time, he's going to be that guy. He's well on his way because, again, it seems like pressure doesn't bother him. He doesn't succumb to it. He just continues to play through everything. 
Yeah, I'm not worried about the pressure with him at all. And some of the shots that he's made, I guess I'm just always picturing like, are you running a high pick and roll with him at seven foot five with the ball <laughs> in his hands? And then he's rejecting the screen and going back to the other side. Like, I don't even know if that's physical. What I just want to see. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Right. I mean, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it yeah. is. I, yeah, and I'm not saying. Seen, right. Uh, we've seen all, almost like these reverse pick and rolls with him sometimes with Trey Jones. We, we've seen a lot of that where Trey sets a screen and cuts to the basket. Victor comes off and feeds him going to the basket. I mean, you want to talk about just to, just flipping the game upside down. I mean, your point guard setting a screen for your seven-foot-four guy on the perimeter, and he's coming off, dropping it down to the point guard, rolling to the rim. I think I'm going to vote for him for Defensive Player of the Year. Um, I, I don't I, care. I, I, I would say that's smart. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a vote. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care about the record. I don't, I, you know, for defensive player of the year, maybe other people look at it differently. I think record is influenced too much of it. MVP is one thing, rookie of the year and that kind of stuff. Like I don't want to hear about like the seeding of these teams. Right. Um, I was watching the Golden State game the other night and you had Chris Paul come off the high screen. He got into the middle and Chris Paul wasn't sure about what he wanted to do. I don't watch many games where Chris Paul is indecisive in what he wants and he didn't know if he wanted to shoot or if he wanted to pass. And then you had Clay come off the same kind of action where he's catching it, driving middle, and then he doesn't know. And there's no stat there for Wimbanyama. I don't even know if they're technically contest because he still has to worry about um, right. Jackson Davis on the baseline. And then I'll watch teams, and it actually happened in Golden State, even though uh, Jackson Davis got him with that, that nice play there towards the end. But you know these teams will run this pocket pass stuff, and it's like, why are you doing it? Because now the big is just right into Wembenyama, and the big doesn't want to do anything. I think the great thing about Jackson Davis's play was that after he had peeled off like five times on that catch, yes. he's setting the screen, he's rolling, he's getting the catch. He's like, why are you giving me the ball? Like, I don't want to go at this guy. I don't want to do this. That's the kind of stuff where I will argue at the end of the year, as much as I love so many other defensive players, you see NBA players give up, get confused, when they're in that restricted area, uh, in a way you do not see most nights with him. With, with anybody else in the league. Right. With anybody else in the league. And I've said it before, he had his defensive presence alone, there's no one that brings that to the league right now. So what you're talking about, what you're describing, I see it on a nightly basis where guys penetrate or they get a, a little pocket pass, they're near the basket, they look, they see him, he's lurking, they pass it back out. He's a deterrent in the paint. And he doesn't even get a challenge nearly as much as you think he would. And he's still leading the league in blocks. So you've had a lot of people that, a lot of players that get in the paint area, they test them, they get their shot blocked, they get it deflected. And now uh, you get in there and you start thinking, not only are you deterred, but then, I mean, as a player, I know I'm going in there against Akeem Olajuwon or uh, Mark Eaton, you know, these, Dikemi Matambo. And you know that they're there when you're going to the basket and you start thinking, how am I going to get this sh shot up? you got to get clever. It's not a traditional layup. It's not an easy dunk going in there. You've got, you start thinking, do I have to throw this thing up there? It's a, you know, guys don't practice these high floaters and runners over the top of uh, long arms. I mean, you, you practice those things, but then you, you're not practicing for this guy. And so you see him deter so many penetrations, uh, so many uh, people, players get in the paint and they think differently. And you're right, there is no stat for that.